In this video, we'll be discussing partial sums of arithmetic sequences. The sum of the first n terms of an arithmetic sequence, denoted s sub n and called the nth partial sum, can be found without having to add up all the terms. We're going to use the following formula. The sum s sub n of the first n terms of an arithmetic sequence is given by s sub n equals n divided by 2 times a sub 1 plus a sub n, in which a sub 1 is the first term and a sub n is the nth term. Some fun math history to go with where this formula came from. Gauss was a mathematical genius from the beginning, and since he was such a genius, he would oftentimes be bored in math class and end up goofing off and getting in trouble. Well, when Gauss was about nine years old, his teacher wanted to punish him for fooling around, so she said, go in the corner and add up the first 100 integers. And a couple minutes later, she sees he's not doing anything. He's not working in the corner. So she goes over to him and says, well, wh why aren't you adding up these numbers? He had already figured out the answer. He had figured out that there was a pattern to adding up these numbers. Now, I'm not going to show you the pattern with 100 integers, but I'm going to show you with trying to add up 1 through 8. Notice that when I pair 1 and 8, if I add those together, I get 9. If I pair up 1 and 7, huh, I also get 9. When I pair up 3 and 6, those add together to be 9. And when 4 and 5 are added together, we also get 9. Gauss noticed that there was this pattern that when you paired up the numbers, you always got the same sum. Now, since we were pairing the numbers, we ended up with half as many pairs as we had original numbers. That's where our formula comes from. a sub 1 plus a sub n, that's like 1 plus 8 to give us a sum of 9, and then n divided by 2 cuts the numbers in half because we had to pair them up. To be able to find the partial sum of an arithmetic sequence, we need three things. We need the first term, the last term, and the number of terms. Let's find the sum of the first 50 terms of the sequence negative 15, negative 9, negative 3, positive 3, and so on. Now let's get the three things that we need so we can plug them into our formula. a sub 1 is given for us negative 15. The nth term, the 50th term, is not given for us. We're going to use the general term formula, a sub n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d to get that 50th term. So a sub 50 is going to be equal to negative 15 plus 50 minus 1 times our common difference of 6. Plugging this into our calculator, we're going to get that our 50th term is equal to 279. And the number of terms that we're adding up is 50. This is all the information we need. Now we just plug it into our formula. S sub 50 is equal to 50 divided by 2 times negative 15 plus 279. It's going to be 25 times 264. The sum of the first 50 terms of this sequence is going to be 6,600. In our next couple examples, you'll see that we are given a series in summation notation. 
When given a series in summation notation, we're going to use the rule of the series to get our a sub 1 and our a sub n. Let's find the sum from i equals 1 to 20 of 6i minus 4. Start by finding our first term. So we're plugging 1 into our rule. 6 times 1 minus 4. a sub 1 is equal to 2. Then we'll plug 20 in our rule. 6 times 20 minus 4. Our 20th term is 116. We have our first term, we have our last term, we know that n is 20, let's plug it into our formula. S sub 20 is equal to 20 divided by 2 times 2 plus 116. It's going to be 10 times 118. The sum of the first 20 terms of this sequence is 1,180. We'll follow the same steps for our next example. We're given summation notation. We're going to plug 1 and 50 into our rule to get our first and our last terms. a sub 1 is going to be a negative 4 times 1 negative 4, and a sub 50 is going to be negative 4 times 50, negative 200. Our n is 50, so s sub 50 is equal to 50 divided by 2 times negative 4 plus negative 200. It's going to be 25 times negative 204. The sum of the first 50 terms of this sequence is negative 5,100. Let's see how this can be applied to a real-life application. In 1970, the median age of first marriage for U.S. men was 23.2 years old. On average, this age has increased by approximately 12 hundredths per year. We want to write a formula for the nth term of the arithmetic sequence that describes the median age of first marriage for U.S. men n years after 1969. And then we want to figure out what will be the median age of first marriages for U.S. men in the year 2025. So let's start by writing our formula. We need our first term and our common difference to write our nth term formula. Our first term was given for us 23.2 uh, years. And our common difference is how it changes each year. And we were told that it increases by approximately 12 hundredths per year. That's going to be our D. And now we write our formula. A sub n is equal to 23.2 plus n minus 1 times our D which is 12 hundredths, and I'd rewrite that as a sub n equals 23.2 plus 12 hundredths times n minus 1. Now we're ready for part b. We're going to use the formula that we just came up with to figure out the median age of first marriages for men in the year 2025. Oh. First, we need to find how many years after 1969, 2025 is. That ends up being 56 years. So n is equal to 56 for us. And we plug it in our formula. a sub 56 equals 23.2 plus 
plus 12 hundredths times 56 minus 1. Plugging that into our calculator, we get 29.8 years. So in the year 2025, the median age of first marriages for U.S. men will be 29.8 years.